is your host, Alex Garrett. And welcome inside to Terminello's Take with Louis Terminello. And Lou, you know, it's usually you and I every week, but we have a very special guest with us today. Introduce our first guest at Terminello's Take here on the Alex Garrett Podcast Network. Well, well, Alex, first of all, good morning. Thank you for having me again. And yes, we have a special guest today, uh, somebody I, I first met in June of 1981 <laughs> uh, when I was with the New Jersey Nets, and uh, he was a young a, a sports announcer uh, uh, doing a, a talk show on, uh, I, what was it, TV3, Matt? Matt TV3, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Matt Lachlan, voice of the Devils, longtime voice of the Devils. Now I'm going to guess, is this year number 18 with the Devils, 19? Yeah, it is. It's uh, 18. It's unbelievable uh, how time has flown, you know, throw in, you know, 10 or 12 years on the TV side, and it's been three decades now plus covering the team. So uh, it's been a blast. I love uh, what lies ahead. And let me just tell you, when when I got the invite, when Alex said, hey, can you uh, – can you do this podcast? I was happy to do it. They said, Lou Terminello is going to join us. I'm like, what, are you kidding me? I mean, that's a home run. It's been a long time, Lou. Uh, we've known each other. We worked together with the Nets for many years. The success on the court didn't match the enjoyment we had off the court. But Absolutely. Those were, those were fun times. Great people. Yes, they, they were definitely fun times. But obviously, speaking of fun times, it's fun times for uh, the New Jersey Devils as uh, – they come off the excitement, the 13-game winning streak of last year, beating the Rangers in the first round of the playoffs, uh, which we knew the Devils were a team on the rise, but I don't think anybody foresaw a 49-point increase uh, from one year to uh, the next. That's for sure. Well, I'll speak for myself. Yes. Uh, and I think I do speak for a lot of people, though. I think the expectation was they would fight for a playoff spot, that they very well could get into the playoffs last year. But – Nobody saw that they would have the best record in franchise history and that they would become a dominant force. And we knew eventually that would happen. There was just too much talent, too many years of good drafts, and then signing a free agent like a Dougie Hamilton. You could see it coming, but it arrived uh, it, in a storm and a, and a fury last year that most people did not see, myself included. Yeah, no, it, it was fun. It was fun to watch. And when you see a team that has prospects and, you know, whether it's hockey or any sport, prospects are prospects until uh, uh, until they uh, uh, come to fruition and ripen uh, and, and, you know, bear the, bear the fruit of their of their pro uh, being a prospect. But to see Hughes and Dawson Mercer and, you know, Nico Heischer and all those guys just. Uh, just blossom was was unbelievable. The skill level on the Devils is, as I don't have to tell you, you know, is off the charts. And they're deep. They got a good combination of young players, veteran players, and uh, they have one of the deepest farm systems uh, in the NHL. So I mean, obviously, the future looks great. But um, I just you know, obviously, they have you know, like any team, they have some. Uh, Question marks going in. Number one, as somebody who sees them play every game, do you think that they're as motivated coming off this amazing season that they had last year, beating the Rangers, coming back from down to nothing in in the first round? And Matt, I'm going to be honest with you. When they lost the first two games at at Prudential, I thought they were done. I did not expect them to beat uh, the uh, the Rangers four out of five, a veteran Rangers team. Um, but, uh, you know, they did. And, uh, Lindy Ruff deserves a lot of credit and, you know, going into last season, he was under a lot of fire from the media sure. and from the fans and he stayed calm. He made the goaltending change and, uh, put, uh, um, Akira Schmidt in and uh, that kind of turned it around. They won that th game three and, you know, in overtime and really, uh, really dominated the rest of the series, even though they lost game six, um, I mean, do you think that they're going to hit the ground running or there's going to be a little, quote unquote, hangover from last year's playoff run? No, I think they'll hit the ground running. Uh, I, like you, could not believe that they had fallen behind the way they fell behind to the Rangers two games to none. It was a great season series and the Rangers were a formidable opponent. 
But the power play, their inability to stop the Rangers' power play was confounding, and their inability mm-hmm. to stop taking penalties was crazy, too. So if they continued along that path, you knew they were in trouble. And you're right. The overtime game winner by Dougie Hamilton turned things around. Shows you how close you are if the Rangers win that game in overtime. Obviously, you're down 3-0, and you're probably not coming back. But it did spark them. No, I, I don't think there's any hangover. I think there was a lot of disappointment the way it ended against Carolina, that they couldn't match the intensity of the Hurricanes. They couldn't match the emotional intensity that they needed to come back against the Rangers. I think that did hurt them. The Carolina series started so quickly after the Rangers when they had no time to recover, and Carolina was all over them. But what it is, it's a spark. They realize two things. One, they don't like that feeling. And two, that there's a lot of hard work. That I don't think they went into the Carolina series saying, hey, we've got it now. But I think there was an understanding at the end of that series that a Stanley Cup run is a long, hard run in every series to manage your best. And so I think it was a learning experience for them. And so far in camp and speaking with the players, it just seems that there's a sense of there's a lot more ahead for this team. Whether it's a championship, I don't know. But they realized last year what it took. There was some serendipity that came along the way, too. But the the, the basics are there. It's a very good team. And, and I think that they're ready uh, to you know, step into the fray as a dominant team over the next decade or so. Again, how many championships they ever are able to put up remains to be seen. But I, I think that they are fueled. They were fueled by that uh, loss to Carolina. Um, you know, you said it's a long run to win the Stanley Cup, and it is. And a famous hockey story uh, when Edmonton, after they lost the Islanders four straight in '83, and they beat the Islanders the next year. Gretzky tells the story of as they're leaving the National Coliseum and they're going past the Islanders locker room and they thought that they'd see everybody celebrating, which they were, but they also had these ice bags on uh, their shoulders and on their knees. And this was a team that that eventually would win 19 straight playoff series, which is ridiculous uh, when you think about it, just how tough it is to win a Stanley Cup, uh, you know, and on – uh, on that note, one of the things to go through a long playoff run, and the Devils had it when they had a guy like Martin Brodeur as their backstop in Nets, question mark still, as we go into 23-24, is the goaltending. I know during the summer there was talk about, well, the Devils trade for a goaltender. Uh, Connor Hellebuck's name came up. He's mm-hmm. going to be a free agent. Is that something that is still a worry? Is that Could we see Con- Connor Hellebuck at the trade deadline? Um, yeah, I, I think you bring up a good point, and I think it's something that bears watching. I, I don't know what he's going to wind up doing, but I think if you look at what the Devils did last year, they were more than pleasantly surprised by what Vitek Vanacek did, winning 33 games, he was, and, and yeah. he was yeah he was terrific. He was but in the playoffs, yeah. yeah, but in the playoffs, as you know, he wasn't that good, and he spit the bid, and Akira Schmidt came to the rescue in that Ranger series, and so. I'm not exactly sure what VTech has in store for this year. I know he did work with a prominent uh, Czech sports psychologist over the summer. You know, he said he wanted to speak with someone in his own language. He thought it would be easier. So someone that Yarmir Yager, among others, has used uh, VTech reached out to because he knows it's between the ears. Uh, he just he gets uh, he gets frustrated by his own mistakes. He gets down on himself. So he's got to work on that. But that doesn't matter, right? It's great that he put in the work. If the performance is not there, the Devils won't attain their goal. So I think it does bear watching. Uh, I think uh, there'll be cautious optimism around what he does because we won't know whether or not all that work is paid off until the postseason comes. And if the Devils sense that even though he's having a good regular season, that he's not strong to their liking, strong enough to their liking, I think they'll look to improve that position for sure. I don't think it's going to be a subject of discussion where every game it's a referendum on Vitek Vanacek, but I do think that the Devils are they're waiting and seeing what they have in him when it comes to the postseason because that's that's the Devils know they're going to make the playoffs that they should mm-hmm. this year and for many years to come. It's what do they do when they get there and do they have that right guy? So yeah, it's it's a good story to follow. Maybe not so good if you beat Tech Vanacek because there'll be pressure, but sure. uh, it, it is it is one of the stories going into this season where he stands in their eyes. I think right now they're supportive, but 
you know, this is a what have you done for me lately sports world. So we'll see what Absolutely. happens. But once Schmidt went into net last year, everything just changed. And would you say that was the only turning point to that? Or what, what else was there in addition to Schmidt? I mean, he, he was the biggest factor. He goes in net and all of a sudden the Rangers are shut down. It was really quite something to see considering how young he is as well. Yeah. No, Alex, he, his, his performance was superb. I, I think that he had a calmness about him that supported the team. Um, he, he's very, very even keeled. And that is what a team wants to see. So when they turned the reins over to him, he had had some success during the regular season. I think the team looked at him and said, okay, how is he reacting? And he was very, very cool and calm. What was happening inside? I don't know, but he exuded confidence. Like, Hey, I got this. Then they adjusted themselves. They stopped taking penalties. And, and once they started to get to their game, First off, they were also – they were a little too high probably going into that series, right? I mean – I think so, yes. run, Right, and now they're playing their rivals, and let's go. They're at home for the first two, and it's like, whoa, what's happened? But they had a very good regroup. They knew, and that was led by their captain, Nico Heischer. Like, fellas, we're a good team, but we got to play like a good team. We can't play like that club that's lost the first two. Uh, so add it all up, it was, it was something uh, – not one thing that happened. I think it was a series of things. But Schmidt's demeanor then combined with his ability to make key saves at big times uh, certainly fostered confidence, uh, more confidence in the Devils. But I think that's what it was. I think it was just his ability to face this surge and say, OK, I got it because Vanacek didn't have it. And, you know, if you're in hockey and you don't know what the guy between the pipes has if you're always worried like what's happening and that happened with Mackenzie Blackwood right like when he was battling back from injuries he couldn't get there like he'd give up these goals and you'd be like well you saw it with Corey Schneider too like whoa we can't trust this yeah. guy and you know I'm going back now but if you can't mm-hmm. trust that guy and he doesn't make the save then you don't have confidence to be able to win a game so I think Schmidt did an awful lot to boost their chances for sure so uh Matt uh obviously What's in front of the goaltender is important too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. The, the Devils lost two terrific veterans in Damon Severson, who they traded, and Ryan Graves. Now, obviously, unless you're going to tell me something that uh, I'm way off base on, uh, Luke Hughes is definitely going to make the team. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and who else do you think? Do, do are you think that we're going to see? Uh, uh, young Simon and uh, uh, Nemec, and I might be saying his last name wrong. Yeah, Nemitz, uh, Shimon Nemitz. Nemitz. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think so. And here's the reason: he may now, as we record this, the Devils had split squad wins the night before last night, Monday night. <clears throat> pardon me. And Nemitz showed very well in Montreal, by all accounts. I was doing the game at home against Philadelphia, didn't see it, but everything I've read and all the reports were that he stood out. So he could push, but they went out and they they traded for Colin Miller, a veteran guy from Dallas, to shore up that veteran presence. That's what I'm getting to, Lou. Uh, mm-hmm. They lost a lot of games in the two guys you mentioned, in Graves and in Severson, o- over 1,000 games in NHL experience. And I don't think you can win a championship. Talent is paramount. We understand that. But if they were to go into the season with Luke Hughes, who has all the talent in the world, but played what five games, two in the preseason, in the regular season, three in the playoffs, Uh, Kevin ball, who Mm -hmm. looks good, but last year didn't even play 60 games. Um, And now you throw in Nemitz who hasn't played one game in the national hockey league. That's an awfully young defense core talented. Yes. uh, But awfully young and, there, there'll be a learning curve for Luke Hughes for all his skill, and there's still a learning curve for Kevin Ball. So I, I just don't think I think Nemitz will start in the American Hockey League. I think it'll be Colin Miller with Brendan Smith as the seventh defenseman, and then let's see what happens. Somebody gets hurt, somebody doesn't perform. Right. I mean, Nemitz will be knocking on the door, but I, I think we will see Nemitz at some point, certainly. But I don't think it'll be. Unless somebody gets hurt in camp, knock on wood, hope right. it doesn't happen. Uh, I don't think it'll be at the start of the season. Uh, Matt, last year a lot of a lot of the guys that that were potential had prospects. The guys that we we knew that had a chance to be real good, Dawson Mercer, even even Jack Hughes, who's spectacular. 
raise their game. Any, do you see anybody on the main part, the mainstays of the Devils? Anybody doing that in 23, 24? Anybody raising his game to a, another level? And I'm not saying 99 points like Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes <laughs> is spectacular. I yeah. mean, if it wasn't Connor McDavid, he could have been MVP. Um, you know, so uh, do you see anybody th- that could make make a significant jump? I don't want to say to that level. Yeah, so I'm curious to see what now Dawson Mercer will do, right? He's played every game since he broke in as a rookie. Um, he has surprised any skeptics. I mean, he was a first-round draft pick, but mm-hmm. people were wondering if he had the speed. They knew he had the sense, but did he have the speed to stay uh, up with the big fellas? And he has shown that. So I'm I'm curious to see what kind of a jump he may make. Now, he had a career year, but I think there's more – that that he can give uh, just as he matures and understands the league even more uh, what he can do so far in camp he's been with Eric Halla and Andre Pilat and that line has looked terrific Pilat bears watching because last year he came to the Devils you know off of three long years you know two championships and losing in a final and uh, you know not a lot of time to rest his body and he he was banged up. You know, he, he had a groin injury that he brought with him to the Devils and that needed surgery during the season. He looks refreshed. He looks so much better than last year, and that will benefit them. So, you know, he's a veteran, so that might not be a surprise if he goes right. back to where he is at a career. So I what I'm getting to ultimately is we all want to see what Luke Hughes can do on a regular basis. But I think uh, Kevin Ball provides a lot of answers. And I know that's not sexy because he's not going to score yeah. a lot, but he's six. That doesn't six. matter, yeah. Right. He's 6'6". Six, six, he's 230 pounds. He's learning uh, how to use his body. He's not been a guy who, you know, has that, that you had to worry about necessarily in the corners all the time. He's not throwing the thunderous hits, but he's starting to do that. And, you know, in this league anymore, that was that's something you don't see a lot. You know, it, you, it's all about speed and skill and it's not it always is. about physicality. So I want to see what his growth is like. He made a ferocious hit last night. Uh, in the defensive zone uh, against uh, the Flyers um, and and knocked the guy's helmet off. And, uh, Wade <laughs> Allison was the player. Uh, and it was just a thunderous hit that, that the crowd went crazy over. So he's got that ability, a little offensive ability too. But I, I don't think there's anyone about to make the offensive jumps that we saw. I mean, Dougie Hamilton had a, a – you know, a historic year for the Devils. You mentioned Jack Hughes, Nico Hesha, career best in goals, assists, points. Brat had a, a, a career high in points. And, uh, you know, even Timo Meyer had 40 goals for the first time in his career. He's another guy, too. I think having been with the team right from the get go, the disruption of being traded in the middle of the season, different systems trying to get a contract. He did have one year left, but, you know, trying to get a new contract. I, I, I don't think we saw his best. And, and so that's a guy that um, I'm looking at too, but he did have 40 goals last year. He only had nine with the devils, but right. so that would be a guy. Um, and he, I mean, the devils did obtain the best player available at the trade deadline. I mean, there were sure. a lot of good players traded, but he was, he was the best. Now what, who will he be playing with Al, uh, Matt? Which, which line do you think he'll be with? So, so far, he's been with Nico Heischer and Alexander Holtz. Well, okay. there's a guy, right? I kind of overlooked Alexander. I mean, most of the lineup, I think, is set. Lindy Ruff would say, no, there are battles going on. But, uh, you know, barring an upset, most of the forward positions are settled. It's just who plays where. They're going to give Holtz a chance to live up to his draft status and show that they did not make a mistake and that he can be a good offensive player in the National Hockey League. So they've got him with uh, Nico and with Meyer. Now that m- might change. He scored a goal last night. It, it you know, wasn't a laser. It was a bit of a layup, but nonetheless, it's still a goal, mm-hmm. and that should spark his Ooh. confidence. So, yeah, he would be a guy. I've forgotten about him all along. I, I don't know where he can go. I don't know that he can make the jumps that we talked about, but any contribution that he can make, if he can make a significant contribution, he, he just – settles everything if he can play in that role and you keep brad up with hughes then you've got that third line that i talked about with hall of Palat and mercer and now you've got some serious depth if holtz can't handle that you got to move somebody up there and then that disrupts a little bit what happens below so uh there's a lot riding on what alex holtz can do matt i've got um, a question about that you mentioned the whole league on the entirety 
what's the East looking like though? What what's is there a different landscape than there was last year? I know that Boston underwent a few changes, but from where you sit, what are you seeing as is, is going to be the challenges for the Devils ahead, or or actually advantages for them with all the change that went on in the East? Tell us about yeah. that. Well, I think Alex, if if all things stay equal and and there are no significant, I keep coming back to injuries, but they're so critical. You lose a guy they for are. a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I still think in the Metropolitan Division, it's Carolina, even though the Devils are only a point behind them, I think it's Carolina's title to lose, then the Devils, then the Rangers. I, I think Peter LaViolette will, will certainly be a benefit to the Rangers, and their window might be slowly closing as they get a little older. We'll see, but they've got great goaltending, and that'll carry them a long way. So after that, I'm not sure whether the Islanders – I don't know if Boston will drop – uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, I don't, that the Islanders or what Pittsburgh can do. Pittsburgh made some changes, got Eric Carlson. So I don't know if a fourth or a fifth team can sneak in there because I think the Atlantic division uh, you know, is really coming on. So Florida and Tampa Bay and Toronto, will Boston drop that much, even though they lost a Hall of Famer and a very good player you know, in Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, respectively? They still have goaltending. They still have defense. They still got that DNA. Are they a playoff team? Will Buffalo jump up? Detroit's making noise. Ottawa is, you know, saying, you know, we're going to start to compete now. So I think in the East, the shift is going a little bit the Atlantic division way, but in the Metropolitan division, the three teams uh, at the top are still the three teams that are going to be, I think, at the top when it's all said and done. So uh, it's just a matter of where the sands are shifting a little bit. But if Pittsburgh can elevate and get back into the playoffs, uh, you know, Boston hangs on, it's 4-4, it's kind of even, Steven. But I think the the teams that are building like the Devils did, they're more now in the Atlantic division, in the Buffaloes and the Ottawas and the Detroits. Right. Um, I guess Pittsburgh still thinks that uh, their window hasn't closed or they wouldn't have gotten – Eric Carlson. I think they still think that they, you know, that they they have a legitimate shot. And of course, they have Crosby and they have Malkin and they have Gensel. And you know, they have they have a lot of still love those guys who were key guys on their their cup teams. I don't know. I guess between the Buffalo, Detroit, and Ottawa, I would say that just my opinion, Buffalo is probably the biggest threat of getting in. Yeah, uh, I'm shocked. Nothing well. Nothing shocks me in sports anymore. But I'm surprised that uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Lamorello didn't make a major major move to upgrade, especially the Islanders' pathetic power play. He didn't do something <laughs> there, but and uh, it was pathetic. But it that was. surprised me, you know. So uh, so, but again, we'll see. We'll see what yeah. the season brings. Well, and, and we'll see, kind of like what Meyer still do, being settled. And, uh, you know, used to the system and know that his future is here. You know, the same thing is with Horvat, right? He comes over and it's like, you got to do something. And then Barzell was hurt for a bit. So now right. they'll have a full camp. So they, they, they'll they benefit. Look, they have, they've got goaltending and that takes oh. you a long, that takes yep. you a long way. And, and we've known Lou for a long time, both of us, Lou. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and listen, he, you're right. It's a little bit of a surprise he didn't try to bring in a little more glamour and glitz, so to speak, to to bump up their chances. But he has a team that always competes, mm-hmm. and the island the Islanders are not going to be an easy out. I I don't know if they can get a playoff spot. I, I think it's going to be hard just the way they they're structured. But they're so damn pesky, and they've got mm-hmm. they've got some skill. So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. They don't fit into the top three for sure. I think they'll be oh. battling for a playoff spot. Uh, we shall see. But that goaltending is pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. No, they have. Oh, real quick. Uh, Great goal. It was very nice to my dad and I. Real quick story. But he had us in his office at the Meadowlands, and he presented me with a Scott Jer- Stevens jersey in 2003, like around the time they won the Cup. So I'll never forget that whole memory there. So, yeah, Lou is always a competitor and, and feisty. I know all three of us kind of have – different experiences with him. You guys probably more than me, but there was a little story there. Um, Lou, you were going to say it before I jumped in there. Uh, yeah. What was I going to say? I was going, Oh, uh, Matt, uh, Mr. Ovechkin, the great Alex Ovechkin. Is he going to get to eight ninety four? Yes, he will. It will cost Washington team success though. Um, they just, that that's what it's all about now. Listen, great player. He sold a lot of tickets for them. 
helped them win a championship. You know, uh, they owe a lot to him and the owner loves him. So they're going to, you know, whether he should play a prominent role, he can still score, but whether or not they should be starting to make the changes, kind of like what you talked about in Pittsburgh, they went out and got Eric Carlson. I don't know. We'll see. Last year was a great year, but before that he had been hurt for a few years. But you owe it to Sidney Crosby, and you owe it to Chris Letang, and you owe it to Evgeny Malkin to, like, let's try it one more time. Um, And I think that's why some of those veteran guys have stayed around in Washington as well. Um, But I think it's just going to be Ovechkin going for Gretzky's record. I think he'll get it. There's no question. The man is a machine. But I think it'll it'll come at team success because they're paying guys who can't perform – like their resumes anymore he can kind of do it but you know i don't know if john carlson can i don't know if tj Oshi can i don't know if Evgeny kuznetsov can you know, right. nicholas backstrom I, I you know unless he has a miracle cure i think his back is just such that he can't be that way anymore and they don't have because they were a, a great team for many years they don't have a burdened farm system right. that's the price you pay and so i think uh, i think they're in the long a long stretch of a rebuild, unless the next Connor Bedard comes along. Because I thought Con- I thought Chicago was in the same spot, and right, suddenly yeah. they've got this brilliant player in the draft, and that That's rebuild true. gets accelerated. You never right? know. Do you follow the camps that are going on right now? Because I know there's a bunch of different like different tournaments going on that features Bedard, that features the youngsters. Are you following that as well? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to, of course, Alex. As you know, I mean, you follow all sports, and you know, you just dive in. So. Yes, to, to say that I am aware of every moment, every player in every camp, uh, I'd be disingenuous if I said I did. But yeah, I, I'm following with what what's going on, and uh, you know, certainly Bedard is living up to his billing. You know, you never know about that jump and the generational um, talent label gets put on the number one pick anymore. I mean, some of it's deserved. Sidney Crosby, some of it's deserved. Connor McDavid, some of it takes a while. It might be deserved with Jack Hughes, but that wasn't the case in his first year. But it looks like Connor Bedard is the real thing. Matt, Jack Hughes, his uh, ceiling, how high is it? Boy, it's it's really, really high. You know, last I saw a quote this morning, Lou, uh, and I'm assuming it, it – he, the writer got it last night, but it's possible he got something from last year. But the Devils were up there with the split squad, and Jack had a terrific game. And and the writer said, you know, Jack told me that I got beat up in my first year. And he did. You know, he was really a boy playing in a man's league. He had come out of the national development program, and that's not even a high junior team. I mean, it's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same as playing in the Canadian juniors and, and playing with a Memorial Cup champion, say. And and he was just a young kid who hadn't matured. So last year, 99 points, <clears throat> close to becoming the first devil to hit 100, setting a team record in points. The game is just coming easier and easier to him. Uh, you know, I physically he's maturing. He's still only 22. He probably un- has not <laughs> It's unbelievable. unbelievable. I'm talking to, talking to Ken Danico yesterday after the morning skate uh, on the ride home and we were going over a couple of things and I said well you know what I see uh, Kenny is Easter's in his seventh year Brat's in his seventh year Jack's in his fifth year and Kenny goes what five years already for you I said I know it's incredible yeah. right this is his fifth year this is Easter's seventh year but you see that that physical mental maturity that you need to go along with the with the skills that you've been gifted with and that's what i'm seeing with the devils and that's what i'm seeing with jack Hughes. so what's the ceiling i you know i don't know he uh, he works on everything he's worked on his shot that's gotten better he's working on his face-offs that's getting better he wants to be a complete player he wants to be uh, you know mentioned in the same breath as uh you know sacrilegious as it may be to some as the Gretzky's and the Ovechkin's mm-hmm. and the Crosby's and the great yeah, names. Absolutely. And he, and he can be that he's got all of that. I said once in a broadcast and uh, Chico Resch almost fell over because I compared Jack really uh, not to a Crosby. He's not built like a Crosby, but he's like a Gretzky. He sees the game far, far differently. He won't score as many goals because nobody scores as many goals anymore. But, you know, he's going to be a 40-goal scorer because he works at everything and he finds spots that others don't. 
And he's a little bit ahead of the play. And he is gifted with skills that are crazy off the board. For those who didn't see the highlights of last night's game, check out the goal that he sets up Dawson Mercer on last night, where he takes it out of his own end. And he just weaves his way a couple of times through Montreal players. He just makes Josh Anderson look silly with a move. And then he just threads a pass through a player's legs to a wide open Dawson Mercer. And it was an exhibition game. So they're not going to go too crazy on the celebration, but it was such a brilliant play. And it ended with such an easy goal that everyone seemed to just kind of shrug their shoulders. Like, okay, let's get to center ice and face off again. Like, okay, we just saw some brilliance. It it was, it was an incredible display of skill. uh, And he's, so the ceiling is very, 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 very hot. Very, very oh, hot. Matt, you know, I know, I know it's only preseason, but can you tell the energy in Newark already? I mean, what's what's it building like over there? Yeah, you know, last night, Alex, they had about eight thousand. Which, you know, the Devils, the way they're in the metropolitan area, the Devils are not going to sell out a preseason game. That's just fact, right? But eight thousand is an awful lot. And there is a buzz, and there was a buzz, and the fans were pumped, and I'm seeing faces I hadn't seen in a long time or new faces. So they're obviously attracting a a wider group of fans. Uh, Some of the people who were tired, as I said, hadn't seen them in a while, tired of the losing, now coming out. Uh, And some of them who were kind of new because, you know, Jack, one of the things that Jack has, and, you know, you guys see it having been in sports, he, he is beyond hockey, right? Like, he crosses the boundaries into the cover of people magazine. Like people want to know what a Jack Hughes does. And he's only 22 as he becomes better. The team becomes better. And the devils are on national TV 13 times this year. So as his story is told and he performs on that stage, you know, he's going to cross those boundaries into, uh, you know, into a popular entertainment figure. And the devils really have never had that. So yeah, there's a buzz. There is a huge buzz around the team. And uh, it it is good to see because, uh, you know, when that place is jammed and it's, it was jammed last year an awful lot, it's loud, yeah. it's a definite advantage. And, and this year they're going to have a lot of sell more. They're going to have a ton of sellouts. The, the yeah. pressure on ticket sales already is pretty high. Yeah, that, that that's great. You see, not only that they're a contending team, they're entertaining to watch. Yes, it's, they are. You know, it's not uh, just, you know, dump the puck in and, uh, Let's uh, play Katie Bar the door hot. It's not that, you know. That, no, no, it is not, and you can't play that way anymore. You and can't. You could, you could back in the day, uh, and that's one of the hallmarks of the Devils of the past. Although people forget about their offensive skill in that 2000, 2000, those two seasons, you know, when you know Elias and Arnett and on and on Sakura were doing such great things. Uh, Scotty Gomez. We could mention a bunch of names, but you can't you can't play that lockdown, hook them, hold them kind of style uh, that the Devils employed to near perfection. Uh, this game is all about skill and up and down. And that's what people want to see. I mean, it, you know, fans, some fans, uh, older fans, the get off my lawn fans, <laughs> uh, they're the ones who kind of dismiss it as a video game. But there is an element of that, and that's what the young crowd wants to see. They want to see skill that they see on their on their screen when they're playing NHL 23 or 24 or 22 or whatever. Um, and the Devils are delivering on that. It's it's fantastic. Well, I don't play video. I don't play video games. <laughs> and I, enjoy, I. I enjoy watching. <laughs> but uh, you're not a, uh, th- these New Jersey Devils. That's you're not a get off my lawn guy, though, Lou. You're <laughs> not a not, get off my lawn guy. I am not a get off my lawn guy. <laughs> when is Patrick Elias going to get his just reward and be elected into the NHL Hall of Fame? It is confounding. I mean, multiple cups, uh, leading scorer all time. Terrific defensive player. I, I don't know what's holding him back, to be honest with you. You know, unfortunately, I don't know that I agree with some of the things that have happened in, in Hall of Fame voting where people Me say, too. I'm going to tell you my ballot. And uh, you know what? I mean, there should be some sense of uh, you're not going to succumb to pressure. I, I realize these guys released the ballots afterward, but then that adds to pressure. Who are you going to vote for next year? Why did you do that uh, this year? And I, I think, you know what, if, if you're – if you're blessed with the opportunity to vote for who's in the Hall of Fame and, and you give it serious consideration, you know what? I, I trust your judgment. I don't always agree with what they do, but I trust the judgment. 
but it's so secretive in the National Hockey League that you know, nobody really knows. And you wonder if it's more good old boys network and does, you know, uh, you know, does the fact that he played, you know, is, is somebody not voting for him because Lou Lamorello wouldn't give that person access uh, outside of the uh, right. you know, the general mm-hmm. scope of when you were able to have access. Like, I don't know. Are, are there access to grind that are being hidden there? And and I just wonder if that is the case because he deserves it. There's no doubt. What well, you know, oh. what he, what he did part of the great devil's legacy. If you talk about the devil's legacy, if you sit there and say, wow, from 95, and I know he wasn't part of that team, but from 95 to 2003, they were a dominant team that won three cups, went to another final, and he was a leader of that team. How he stays out of the Hall of Fame is beyond me. Yeah, no, it's shocking to me. It really is. But uh, we'll see what happens. uh... Hopefully someday. Yep, I hope so. For his sake, he definitely deserves it. Matt, what's it like seeing these guys' numbers go into the Raptors? Because you've been for almost every retirement ceremony, right, for all those the, those guys. I, I have witnessed all of them. I was lucky enough, fortunate enough, that I uh, hosted Patrick's number retirement ceremony. But, you know, I was able to sit back and watch Doc Emmerich do his thing so eloquently and so brilliantly. And, uh, yeah, to, to see – you know, it's it, it's funny when when their numbers are retired, right? You sit there and you go, "Oh my goodness!" You know, I was also lucky to see them play for the majority of their careers. You know, I didn't see every fifth of Scott Stevens' career, but you know, I saw the high <laughs> I saw the high years when he won championships and was among the most feared defensemen in the league and was the captain of the team. And you know, we were talking about uh, you know earlier about working at. TV three suburban cable vision where it started for me right out of <laughs> basically, basically right out of Seton hall. And I was lucky. Bob Lee was the one who introduced me to TV three. Of course, he went on to a great career at ESPN. Bruce Beck followed him as sports director and Bruce, who has been a wonderful local presence on NBC and nationally to doing Olympics and internationally, I guess, but has been in the market for so long and done such a great job. You know, he was a mentor and further took me under his wing and, I think about, you know, where I started, where I've wound up and just, you know, really a a blessing it has been. So, yeah, I, I, it's been phenomenal to sit back and watch those banners go up and and see these great teams. And it was a little sad to see the the drop off and witness that too, these last couple of years, but I am fully confident that, that the devils are back. uh, You know, if not, now recognize were uh, perhaps by the end of this year they will be, but certainly over the as I said next ten to fifteen years with this core, there's no reason that they can't be looked at uh, the way those teams from ninety five, two thousand, two thousand three are looked at. Well, I I totally agree. I'm looking forward to the season. Uh, it's a good first month for the Devils as far as their schedule go. I think they have like six out of their first eight games at home or something like that. Yeah, so th- they'll have a chance to. And and again, correct me if uh, you, you think I'm wrong here. The first those first 20, 25 games of the NHL season, as far as trying to make the playoffs, is so important because once you start chasing with that third loser's point, it's so hard to catch up. It it is hard, and you know I don't know what the number is, but the percentage is awfully high of teams who are in a playoff position by American Thanksgiving, they retain that uh, that position. Maybe that that not exact position, but they retain right. a playoff position. It's awfully, awfully hard. And uh, you don't want to get off to a bad start. And that's one of the things that Lindy Ruff has emphasized here. Like we got off to a good start last year. They they lost the first two games, but then shortly thereafter, they went on that 13 game winning streak and, you know, it was off to the races, but let's establish right from the get go that, uh, you know, we are going to be one of the best teams in the league. Let's get off to that good start knowing that a stumble, you know, then you start, like you said, you start skating uphill and it's, it's awfully hard. So uh, there'll be challenges along the way, but Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, get off to a good start. Let's, let's, let's see the devils do that and, and kind of cruise. And the the only last thing I'll say is for the fans who are listening, 52 wins last year, 112 points, both highest in franchise history. 
it will not be a failure if the Devils win 47 games and right. have 105 mm-hmm. points, but they're in the playoffs. I think they also realize off of last year, getting back to one of the questions we talked about uh, earlier, uh, what, getting in is important because then then the hard work begins. So it didn't help the Devils, quote unquote, to have the best record ever against Carolina. So right. they need to figure out a way to be a better team in the second round of the playoffs. And should they play the Rangers in the first round again, how do you handle the emotions if you win again? And how do you bounce back and find that same depth of play to carry you through into the third round? So um, so there might be some step back in terms of points and wins, but I think they'll be better served in the postseason because of what they've gone through and, and what they will go through, some trials and tribulations this year. Matt, you well, mentioned we- Doc Emmerich. You mentioned Doc. And, um, oh, my gosh, to have you and Chico – Kind of brings me back to the Chico Doc Emmerich days. I mean, what's it like working with Chico? And what did you learn from Doc Emmerich over the years as you uh, did have done the announcing for the Devils all these years now, 19 years you were saying earlier? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, on the TV side, when I was doing ringside reporting, Doc was doing the play by play. And so I learned so much from him uh, hard work and preparation. I, I'd like to think that I had some of that too. Like, that's kind of why I was able to move up the ladder a little bit. But it went to a whole nother level uh, with Doc and his his caring about the game. You know, he certainly was as prepared as anyone and a wordsmith beyond belief. But he also cared about the people who nobody really recognizes or knows outside of the game itself. The trainers, the uh, equipment managers, uh, the security guards. The, you know, the longtime ice guy in Detroit or Minnesota or Montreal, those are all important people uh, to Doc. And, and, and what I learned is that they are, in many ways, the backbone. Yeah, we talk about the great players, and without them, obviously, there's no sport. Uh, but the ones who help the stars perform, they have a role, too, and, and Doc treated them with such dignity. So I learned a lot about the game from him. I learned a lot more about hard work. Uh, it was just a pleasure to be able to work alongside him and, and see how he prepared and see how he described things. And working with Chico, well, listen, he he's the best. You know, everybody everybody loves him. He's got a way about him. And I say this uh, with a lot of love uh, for those of a certain age. You know, he's the Phil Rizzuto, the John mm-hmm. Madden, right? He is, he's got that personality, you don't know necessarily what he's going to say, but his enthusiasm is incredible. His insights are great. His love of the game is fabulous. And so it's just a delight to be able to work alongside him. The energy he brings each night is, is fantastic. So I love it. Hopefully I can do it for a long time still. Well, uh, you're doing a great job. And uh, Alex and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to speak with us today. That's for sure. My and pleasure. Lou, I was I was excited when I got the invite, and uh, Lou, it's good to catch up with you for sure. And Alex, uh, continued success here. Thank you. Well, the million dollar question is: Where can people listen to you this year uh, for Devils hockey? Because obviously, you have a fan base, you have a listenership, but where can new people start listening to you guys as well? Sure. So, uh, don't go to your radio dial. It's the changing <laughs> world of media. We are digital yeah. only, as more and more teams and stations are uh or you know i mean even espn just announced that they're moving to the app you know in new york here they're going to have the am signal but not the fm signal anyway i digress so we are on something called the devil's hockey network uh which you can access through the devil's website uh through the nhl's website uh you can get us on sirius xm as well and so you can get us really anywhere around the world that you have access to the, the World Wide Web. You can find the Devil's Hockey Network. Unfortunately, you cannot find us by going up and down your dial. Lou, does anybody <laughs> go up and down the dial anymore? And now you I just, do. I, I do I'm ta- Me too. I mean, I, I miss that a little bit. I, I, I use that term and people go, what do you mean up and down the dial? No, you actually had to turn the dial to find the radio station. Uh, and now it's just there. But at any rate... Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, you won't find us you won't find us on radio uh, you know you'll find us on a bunch of different apps i just remember growing up listening to you on the radio with my dad who did pass in april i'd say that but he he got me interested in radio and 
listening to all you guys, listening to you, Matt. Also, I mean, every every night it felt like so. Um, thank you for, and I'm glad you continue it. You know, I love I love listening to your play by play. So this well, has been you. great talking to you today. Well, thank you again. It was my pleasure to join you guys on the show, and uh, I love talking about the Devils. I look love talking about sports and. I think people realize I just love talking in general. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, um, but again, we, we, we thank you for your time. We, we'll catch up with you, um, obviously, during the season if you're available. Yes, and, for sure, uh, Lou. I'd love to. Yeah, and uh, we'll take it from there. And uh, I'll come see you when I come to a Devil's Game at Prudential Center. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate Lou, it. Lou and Alex, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Matt Lachlan, for joining Terminello's Take Today on the Alex Garrett Sports Spotlight.